Oh, wait, wait, wait. I need you to say that again. Say that again, because I'm, I'm taping this. I'm taping this since I got you on the end. I'm just going to tape it. Say it again, if you don't mind. Training for the Northern County Juvenile Detention Center. Okay. Right after, not after, after they called him and his trial was set up. Okay. okay. He was in the safety building. Yes, yep. And they was doing our training. They was giving us train cell extraction, extracting one of the, the shells and teaches us how to extract people out of cells that refuse to come out of the cells. Okay, okay. But before then, they was telling us that Jeffrey Dahmer is in the next cell and he is such a good person yep. and everybody feels talking bad about but he's personally he's a very polite person and they said we cannot go and look in the cell because we saw we was one cell for him see there yeah see they protect him exactly exactly and that's what my um whole thing about the show was and the reason i wanted to do a live stream is because I didn't, you know, I know the people got uh, killed, and I have mixed emotions, but, you know, sometimes I think they should make a memorial, but my main basis is I want people to understand is that uh, the people, the powers that be, white privilege allowed Jeffrey Dahmer to do that, and no matter what he did, they kept trying to make us feel sorry for him, kept trying to act like, you know, he's such a nice guy, I can believe this shit. I go to work in the morning, and I'm like, well, you know, he's, you know, his mother was on a lot of drugs and stuff when she took him, you know, when she had was pregnant with him. I'm just looking, like, are, are you actually trying to get me to deal with you making excuses for him? You don't give a damn about no other black woman. It's still now. Mm. It's still now. It's no different. It's still now. Now, see, that's Jeffrey Down. That's way in the what? 90s. 91. 90s. Okay, we talking about almost getting to be 30 years. Thank you. Okay, but what did they do with George Floyd? Oh. Uh, Same kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. That officer killed that man, and they still think he shouldn't have been put in jail. Yep. And see, this is what white people need to understand. They're they cruising for it. They want a civil war. They keep saying, oh, oh, oh. You know, but black people have put up with a whole lot of uh, mistreatment, a whole lot of bull crap right in front of our faces. Brother, just forget about it. It was such a bad time. I said, but, but, but the people that he killed, they were somebody's loved ones. Somebody loved them. I mean, so you know, you can't act like they didn't exist. Uh, Y'all already cut, uh, tore the building down. And so, okay, I can respect that because people kept going over to the building acting like it was a museum. Okay, so you, you, you tore it down. But, you know, what? Now you're just sitting there looking at a pla uh, nothing but uh, empty space. You know what happened there? So to me, it, you know, I don't know. That's just my opinion. You know, but you can't act like those people didn't exist. That's horrible. That was cruel, what he did. And I know. Thank you. Okay. Yes. 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 And the girl in Dallas that sit next to me uh -huh. talked about it was one guy, her friend, who lucky he been to became a victim. Mm. Jeffrey Dahmer met him, took him in his apartment, and only reason he didn't get killed because Jeffrey tried to give him a beer, and, and he didn't want to drink it, and he was pressed for time. Uh -huh. He seen the, the expression when he was getting ready to leave. Uh, Jeffrey was acting, uh -huh. Dahmer was acting, but he just left. But she said, he said. I know the one you talking about too. Yeah, I know. I, uh huh. And that's and, and they. But he ended up, you know, like he got out. One of them, and and but he realized that 
man, this dude must have put something in my drink, you know, because he started feeling all drugged out. I think that's the one. But they he ended up. You probably talking about Tracy. No, not Tracy. Now Tracy was the he was the end. Remember, Tracy's the one that uh, brought the whole house down. But there was another brother that he uh, he said, "Man, you better let me out this damn house." He, he but he was drunk, and the grandmother uh, sat down with him, and they sat down all night long because the grandmother said, "I'm I'm not going back up to my room. Um, something is wrong with him, and I want to make sure he's okay." Because Jeffrey was getting ready to kill him. He had already gave him some uh, drugs. And so, but the grandmama intervened and stopped him from killing him. And so what, uh, at that point, um, early in the morning, they put him on a damn bus. They put him on the 60, the 60 and Burleigh bus. And Bur they put him on the bus. And then... Uh, he rode all the way to the end of the route, and the driver said, "Hey, you look, you gotta, you know, it's the end of the route." And when he got up, they found him somewhere, and he ended up in the hospital. So he goes to the police and told them, "Look, I don't do drugs. I just, you know, I had a, a some Sanka coffee with this guy because I told him he, he, the reason why he met Jeffrey is because he had car trouble." He said, and I went back to his house because he was supposed to call the tow truck. You know, we didn't have cell phones and shit like that then. So he was going to go back there and call the, uh, you know, get some help. And then he said, uh, Je he told Jeffrey, he said, Jeffrey kept trying to give him a beer. He said, no, no, no. He said, he said, well, you want some Sanka? I know you, you know, you can have some coffee. He said, okay, I'll take some coffee while we wait. So, but what happened was when that dude went to the hospital the next day, they said, you know, you almost died. You were OD'd. He said, what you mean? I don't even take drugs. And he said, I'm going to tell you, that dude did it to me. Uh, now, the police, he had to make the police go to their grandmama's house. And they said, well, we can't prove, we can't prove that he did. He said, man, I'm telling you. He said, oh, you're going to take his word for it. And he already got a record, a felony. But you ain't going to listen to me at all because I'm a black man. And that shit was true. Because they knew Jeffrey. Had uh done if they cause nobody wanted nobody cared, those white men didn't care because all they do is look up Jeffrey Dahmer's name and see his name. He already on probation for trying to molest uh Conorak sent us some phones, brother. So, but the fact of it is, they didn't even care. And so when dude said uh uh, when the police said they went to his house, he said y'all didn't arrest nobody. He said, well, you know, we can't really prove that what you said. He knew it right there. He just slammed the shit down and walked out of there because he knew it was crap. And then he saw Jeffrey again at 219. And then he ran and told, dude, don't get in the car with him. Don't get in the car with him. And that's what T told me. That's when T uh, uh, said, damn, what I think I saw was uh, somebody stopping somebody. from." The, I said, well, that's it right there. You know, and she worked for the housing authority, remember? But she told me that. Uh, she remember uh, somebody telling somebody when they was leaving, don't go in, don't go with him, don't go with him. He he, he been putting people out in bathhouses. He been giving them drugs, and the dude that was like, what? He said she was like, they was like, don't go with him, don't. And so they was looking, but they kept on going. And 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 the dude, he that was one of them that got saved as well. So a few of them got saved because either they t had better sense than to go, or like I said, the grandmother saved them, or either like this particular guy, he didn't get in the car with him because somebody stopped him. He said, man, you better not get in there with him. He said, because uh, I was talking to somebody at the bathhouse. He'd been barred from the bathhouse because he'd been drugging people. I had to pull out all my information that I had. Because you remember me and my partner... Man, he ain't even doing any kind of investigations to to do it because he. But he killed a couple white people, but they they didn't really know. <laughs> right, and he killed a a, a, a Latino a, a a Latino guy as well. That's why I say I don't know if I can really say he was racist. You know, I just think you know because if you, I just think he. I mean. I don't think he was. I just think that he was an opportunist. And and black people 
we and I hate to say this about us. We are more vulnerable. Thank you. Thank you. And that's what he did. He went around the most vulnerable people. Okay, some of, and then if you got addictions, everybody lived that was living over. Remember that whole area over there was like a trap house. All mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of drug users over there. A lot of uh uh people that you know, there's I I call them on the left foot. You know, and so he would promise them shit because he knew they didn't have nothing over there. And that rent over there, what was a hundred dollars, one hundred thirty dollars a month? Hell, the rent was nothing at that time. I'm thinking about how rent is now, but rent it was it didn't cost nothing. Denise lived over there. You remember my foster sister Denise lived over there, so I'm like, and. The, the, the fact of the matter is that's why he moved in that area. Not just so he can, uh, you know, get some black people. But, hell, it, the black people came to him. And that guy, Tracy, he ain't never recovered yet. And that's why I feel bad because he's in jail and he never got therapy from what happened to him. Never. Okay. Okay. We never could have kept connected. Okay. Okay. And then I seen him on TV. I said, Me and him was supposed to get inside. But I don't know what it what was our agreement. I think it was involved with some money issue. Okay. I just feel like I don't know why. But, but when was you living over there by the graduate? Oh, okay. 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 Always on. You know, I was, you know, I went out dance because that was the dance place. Okay. Okay. I mean, most of us at this age, that was the places we went to, Sunny's East or the Graduate. Um, remember, that's that was our age. I mean, well, hell, Jeffrey Dahmer is our age. <laughs> you know, he was born in uh, uh okay, you uh, he was born in 1960 May. I mean, come on, he right there with us. Okay, I was born in April '59. You know, so I'm a few months older than him, and you was on, is a few months older than me. Like, cause you was born in '58, but you was born in August. I don't know if you got my a belated birthday wishes, by the way. Um, but I did. I gave you a birthday shout out. But um, yeah. Uh, but all of us, like I said, we around that same age. You know, and those were the hangouts, huh? Didn't we? They don't know what fun is. <laughs> and I look at them because they be like, oh, you ain't nothing but an old head. I be like, you know what? That's right. But, I, yeah, we had, y'all ain't got shit. Y'all can't even go to the lakefront without somebody getting shot. Y'all, I, I would hate to be a young person um, at this time right now. I would hate it. Thank you. <laughs> That's why I was telling Naja. I told Naja that. And she was like, yeah, mama. She said, but I do remember when you could go to the lakefront and spend the night. She said, because I used to drive sometime in my car and go over there. Um, she was like over there by the marina. And I could stay in my car. She said, sometimes I, I be wanting to think. I don't know what to do. I sleep in my car all night. And nobody bothered me. I was like, really? She was like, yep, a lot of times when I be trying to think and really in deep thought, I said, well, well, because now I think you got to be from down there at like, what, 6, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock? Well, it's, it's earlier than 10 o'clock. You can't even be down there park. They don't want you down there. So, <laughs> yeah. Street. 
Yep. 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 And they will have stars, professional stars. Thank you. Oh shoot! Everybody been down at Juneteenth. Hell, I I've been down. I performed at Juneteenth. Uh, the Shy Lights, the Shy Lights even came. To, I mean, because they had a uh, major acts back in the day. Yeah, um, um, we opened the show for uh, one of those major acts. I can't remember, but that's what that's the kind of fun. And black people could gather together and nobody be shot. Uh huh. Nope. Man, they on the rooftops now with rifles. That's why I can't even go no more. When you go down there now, as soon as you hit Third Street. They on the roofs with rifles, you know, looking down on the crowd, like, because I think it starts, like, on Hadley now, center to Hadley, like, maybe one or two blocks. That's sad. That's fucked. Um, excuse my language. That's insanely messed up. We used to have from, um, what was it, from 3rd and Locust all the way down, I think, 3rd and North Avenue. Okay, and all that block from nine o'clock in the morning to ten o'clock at night. All day. And these young people now they don't and they, they always say, Well, they ain't got nothing to do. That's because they don't know how to act. That's why they ain't got nothing to do. Cause they shoot and they act and they're a damn fool. And they ain't been trained. They like some rabbit dogs. And I'm saying they can get mad if they want to. When we they can, I don't care. These people ain't been trained. A lot of them kids is on psychotropic drugs. They done grown up. That's them kids that was on them Ritalin. Those kids that come out of the DT, come out of St. A's. And all, you know, one of my kids got killed over there on 25th Street, 25th and Capitol. He was the one that they killed up in that apartment building. I was like, who was that? It was one of my boys I had in this um, a, a group home. I can't think his name right now. But a lot of those kids was off on the left foot. That's why they was in those facilities. And their parents wasn't shit. Okay? Uh, or the mama done had too many babies that she can't take care of. And she got no help. So the kids already starting off behind the eight ball. And they out here raising they self. They'd be out there begging at McDonald's. It'd be 12 o'clock. You'd be like, what you doing out here? Uh, oh, can I get sick? I just want to get a hamburger. Can I get a couple of dollars? I said, no, I'll buy you I'll buy you some food. I don't give you no money. I'll buy you a, a meal. If you're hungry, you say you're hungry, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well then, come on, we're going to get some food. But you're not going to sit up here and ask. No, I mean, and I'm like, what the hell is they doing outside? Where they mama at? So now you got the kids and the kids of these people growed up. And and it has made the world worse. And they want to know, what can we do? Well, you know, I think it's an in-house thing, personally. Uh, the police, you know, ain't going to do nothing but shoot you when you call them. I think you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't call them unless it's a real, real, real emergency and you don't care if the person end up dead you know that's the only time i call the police some people call the police on dumb stuff i'll be like don't do that you make sure that this is really a serious situation before you call the police because when the police come they come in with a gun and you could be the one that shot call the police and they'll shoot you yeah. you know it's really a different time and like i said but one thing is still the same. Jeffrey Dahmer being able to move in amongst them white people because wouldn't no black person be able to move in a white neighborhood and do that? Oh, no. They don't know all this to move his ass off. This bitch is black. He's <laughs> talking to the white people. And 
some black man got some little young white boy. Oh my God, the police be off the road. So that go to show you the laws are written for us. The laws ain't written really for white people. They written they wrote for us, and, and and you know, as a whole, I don't care what they say. As a whole, how they enforce the law is with black people. Jeffrey Dahmer, the, even the damn judge, talking about, well, you know, you have another chance. I certainly hate to ruin your life. What kind? Of, I ain't never heard no judge talk like that to no black boy. We not gonna put you in, and you done raped somebody. But we we gonna let you uh, come out and be on um you know work release because you know we hate to see you mess up your life and we hate to make it seem like in I was like this is the kind of enabling that was done and that's what happened that's why he was able to do what he did it it was because the system failed us and then the insult. When they gave them officers their job back off of Balterzak and the other one, I can't think of his punk ass name, but Balterzak ended up being the head of the police union. Now, what kind of insult is that to black people? See, they do all kinds of insulting type of shit, you know, that make you just, woo. As I said, you have to really go woo when you're dealing with uh, people in authority and they white. Because they got no souls. They have no souls. And I don't care what nobody said. They can get mad. Oh, you shouldn't have said. I, okay. You know, but it's it's the it's how on a receiving end, very seldom do you find a person that's part of that system that's fair. Right. Very seldom. Yeah. Very seldom. Very I'm not saying that it's not none. It's just a rarity. Just like Robin Shellow. She was an angel. And I, I hate that she's gone. You know, uh, she was a she was an angel white woman. She cared about people. And she was like, this don't make no sense. These she's like, these black kids are traumatized. Nobody wanted to hear her. She said, This is trauma. This is trauma. When you when you know you got, you know, when these conditions that they live in and the violence and this she said we have to do something to address the trauma in the black community they was they white people hated her you know uh huh i know you do yep exactly Who said that? Frank Price. Yeah. See there? I know. It's like, God, you must hate us. Uh -huh. Then they had the nerve to paint them white. So you know we ain't have nothing coming. And all that brainwashing, look at that old damn white Jesus who allowed uh, police dogs to be uh, sicked on us and all kind of shit. And you like, damn, well, why am I going to church? I know those were the questions I would be like. Well, why we got to go to church every day? This dude don't care about us. No way. He white and he letting the white police sick the uh, German shepherd dogs on us. And Jesus don't do nothing about it. So something wrong with that picture. You know, and so I can understand as like we said what Frank Price said that as a kid you wonder, you like, damn, what did, what did black people do to make them treat us so bad? What do we do? And the thing is nothing. They project all their hatred on us and all their insecurity. And they glad they got a whipping post because they feel so messed up and insecure about themselves. They know they ain't shit. And Thank you. And that's when they did. Yep. Institutionalized. Yep. And let all the white officers kill black folks. It was all right. You 
you know. It's been down from the history. Yep. History, history, history. History, history just repeats black itself. Okay. Kill a black boy. Yep. Yep. Accidentally or uh, anything is still on now. And that white officer always yep. justified. Always. And then That's the worst the part, yep. And then and, a new form of anger. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? When when I knew when the police when um no matter who's the president, if we can't get them to do away with qualified immunity, then what that means is, oh, y'all want to uh, want to keep letting this shit go on. Y'all think because we breathe so fast, you want to keep killing us because you need somebody to dump on. You need black bodies to put in these prisons. You need see we running this whole system, whether we um you know whether we understand it or not. We running this system. Either they going you can be caught with a jaywalking ticket and they'll put you in jail. And the jail is out there in Stanley, Wisconsin. So all those dumb negroes, those I mean those white folks can get a job off of us. Okay? Because ain't no job jobs in them little farm towns. So they'll build a prison. And then house a bunch of black people out there. And then pay them, you know, correction officers, pay them $20, $25 an hour. Okay. And this is how they they keep their little towns afloat. Off of black bodies. Right. Oh, that's the wrong one. And then they don't want to put none in the city. Why mm -hmm. would you not put one in the area where black folks can come and see their people. You see? Uh -huh. But they just get all these um, halfway houses and stuff like that. Right, just halfway houses, yeah. The, the facilities for, for adult prisoners all up north. They know black folks ain't coming to live up there. Thank you. And they coming to work up there. Thank you. Thank you. So they can have all the white boys with a job. They think they, they think that we so stupid we don't see the game they've been playing for a hundred of years. You know, where we can't break even. Like uh, Michael Jackson said, you can't win. You can't get out of the game. You can't break even and you can't get out of the game. That's what Michael Jackson said. And people thought, you know, to me, I always say this. Michael Jackson was the gangsterest truth teller we had. He told the truth. And people always thought, you know, they, they laugh at Michael. Say he's soft. Michael said, you can't win. You can't get out of it. And you can't get out of the game. You can't. You can't break even. Because they got this shit all sewed up. Where you're going to be the underdog. And unless you burn this system down and replace it with a system of, of, of justice. It's, it's messed up. And they can't do that because they running this, the little engine that could, they running off black and brown bodies. White folks commit more crimes, but we the ones that, because uh, we don't, we ain't even all the population. But the same crimes they get, uh, uh, we get, um, they might get arrested for, we go to jail, they go home. Okay, so in the way they divvying out justice, that's why I couldn't feel bad because, you know, I ain't, when Jeffrey Dahmer got his head bashed by um, Christopher Scarver, and he was the one that worked with Jamil, and they um, he killed the supervisor. <laughs> he, he was hearing voices, and he killed their supervisor. So he didn't have nothing to lose. He... He didn't have a damn thing to lose. And that's why he bust both of them upside the head. Uh, uh, remember, uh, the dude, Richard Anderson, is the one who said that the um, black guys, two black guys, killed his wife and stabbed her in the face all those times and she was pregnant. And they did that at TGIF in the parking lot. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. It was Fridays, right? Fridays. Yeah. One of them, yeah. And then he blamed it on black people. Mm -hmm. 
T.D. Friday, he had a cap on, acting like he was uh, a gangster. And they went picking up all the black guys they could pick up. <coughs> Every black guy they ran into, they picked him up and said that he fit the description of who this white dude said killed his wife. That's the kind of shit we go through. That ain't nothing but slave catchers type of stuff. That's that ain't nothing but slave stuff. That's, That's why I said, black people better wake up. We better stop fighting each other and wake up. We ain't all got to like each other either. Thank you. Right. Because they did it. Yep, and that's why, yep, and that's like Jeffrey Dahmer. As crazy as he was, he knew that we all dysfunctional, and if he come right there with us, we'd be, he'd be right at home. Because he was dysfunctional too. He was just fit dysfunctional to the thousand of power. You know what I'm saying? But uh, like I said, if black people don't learn nothing else, to me, this Jeffrey Dahmer uh, series, if you get a chance to watch it, man, I'm telling you, Watch it because it was better than the rest of them. And it, it didn't really focus on how he killed them like that. It focused on everybody else. Like the chick that lived in the building. Uh, which really her name ain't Glenda um, uh, Cleveland. Glenda Cleveland is the one uh lived cat a corner in the next building. Uh, I can't think of the chick's name because I talked to her a bunch of times. And uh, Rita Isabel, I know her. You know, we know her, um, and that was Earl Lindsay's sister. And then remember the dude that y'all knew, uh, I know Ricky knew him, the one, um, Anthony, Tony, Sears. Yeah, Anthony Sears, I know. Yeah. Yeah. See, and, and like I said, this, you know, but they want you to act like, oh, nope, none of those people existed. Now, I wanted to, if all those people if the victims were white and the person that killed them was black and the people that asked for a memorial, I bet you they'd get it. This is all it's still racism to this day. Even if you don't want to name all the names, you can put a plaque here and say, you know, this shall never happen again in the city of Milwaukee. You still sending out good vibes to let people know you acknowledging their pain. And that's just my opinion. Like I said, everybody don't feel that way, and it's okay. Right. See what I mean? But when it comes to this, because all these black people, man, that's what I said. Um, I'm trying to get uh, as many people, but I'm had to, because I didn't know I was off of Facebook. So I got to set up another Facebook, but I got to make sure that, um, you know, the people, huh? Why are you on Facebook? Because they kept putting me in Facebook jail, and then I remember, you know, I'm just going to get off of here. Because they got mad because I said Donald Trump's father was a Klansman. And I know he was. I read it, I saw it, and then they tell me I was lying. That's not uh, accurate information. I was like, oh, hell no. So there's some people behind the scenes that shadow banning and messing with my channel. Because you're not going to tell me that I'm lying. And they talking about they, they took the uh, video down because they said that his father wasn't a Klansman. And that really messed with me. I said, y'all must be the Klan. You know, if you're going to tell me I don't know what I'm talking about, that's an insult. I wouldn't even have made that about his father. His father uh, was very active in those races. And, and I, I mean, the proof is how he ran his buildings. They was racist to the people. that They, they got sued, hell, for discrimination. Need I say more? His father got sued for from the city of New York, taking their money, mistreating them people, uh, same shit. Oh, we're going to look out for lower uh, income and then buy a building and then don't want to rent to black people. If you do, put a note on all their doors talking about we want you out of here and all kinds of crazy stuff. All to the black tenants. I mean, come on. That's how Donald Trump grew up. 
in a racist household. So that's why it don't shock me that he could come down that elevator and say that what he said that time. I'm saying because that's a that's a Ku Klux Klan son. He doing what his daddy taught him. And I, I ended up putting that on Facebook and then they kicked me off. Yeah. So um what 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 they did was they, they didn't kick me off. What they did was they took uh put me in suspension and then I just deleted my channel. <laughs> I was so mad. I was like, you know what, I'm sick of Facebook anyway. But um, you know, like I said, why this Jeffrey Dahmer some people are open or re traumatized and I don't know if I'm re traumatized or not, but I think it's more like a therapy. To me, for me, and for some of us that have lived that, I don't, I'm not be, you know, because it's there. It never leaves. You can't just, yeah, you know, what I mean? you, so by us talking about it, maybe not, it, even with this next generation, maybe for the generation, some of us that couldn't take it, okay, fine. But the next generation that's asking questions about it, I don't mind telling them because for, for me, it's therapy. It's a sense of therapeutic uh, release to because I had oh I got so much uh, pent up you know animosity towards the city of Milwaukee and how they handled Jeffrey Dahmer. It was a travesty, you know. So yeah, it was. Was all he was a character, man. And he and you know what I keep saying Milwaukee never recovered from Jeffrey Dahmer either. We never recovered from that 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 you know we still we still hurting still angry still ain't full of anxiety, you know, that, because of what happened. You know, a lot of people made fun of the of his victims, you know, and you know, like I said, it was in you know it was just a real crazy time. But if you do though. If you do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, um, um, uh, uh, okay, I see you. If you do get a chance, though, Tommy, it's on Netflix. And it's about 10, it's, it's about 10 episodes. Oh, it is? Yeah. It's a series. It's How long a, is one episode? Oh, uh, maybe about an hour. Oh, okay. Yeah, so oh, in, I just binge watched it. I just binge watched it, man. I was like, look at this. And I, I, to me, it was, you know, because I really don't watch none of that stuff that got to do with Dahmer because, you know, it's too stupid. And the way they do it and they make it all, you know, macabre. But to me, this was well done. I thought it was well done. And the person they used looked just like him. Yeah. Looked just like him. And he was the same kind of dude that Jeffrey was, you know, a, a humble and meek. Agreeing to everything. I mean, he had he had Jeffrey Dahmer's uh, even characteristics down to, uh, you know. Yes, baby. All right, then. Okay, bro. Well, look, it was good talking to you. Now, I'm going to see how this turns out because um, I'm just going to load it up. And I got one kind. Maybe somebody else will join us, man, when I get this. A uh, phone, because so I, I really, really, really want to do, um, you know, hopefully before the weekend. If not, it's all good. But they show coming in my inbox talking about uh, Jeff Dahmer, and I'm going to try to oblige them if I can. Okay. <laughs> all right, then. Well, you have a good evening, okay? All right, then, good evening. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, y'all, I hope that was uh, good enough. I mean, you could hear it. Uh, that was one of my friends that worked in corrections during a time when Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, during his reign. And I hope you enjoyed that little conversation that we had. Um, so, if you like what you hear, like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.